Oh man, it's so late at night. I don't feel ready for this live stream at all. <laughs> I don't have a plan. I didn't warm up. I haven't done anything today. Uh, basically, all I've done today, or I should say yesterday, is I grew a tumor on my remaining two brain cells watching C-SPAN. So that's been my day. And then I fell asleep multiple times because I've been getting no sleep. So that's basically uh, that's basically what I've been working on. What about you guys? How are you guys doing? <laughs> So, Horizon Zero Dawn. We need to pick up the new Storm Slinger, finish upgrading it. I've heard that the Storm Slinger is a stronger uh, uh, light bow gun for thunder ammo than uh, any of the Safajiva light bow guns. So that's what we're going to be focusing on. Oh man, I feel like I'm dying. <laughs> okay, so there's the online session ID in the upper right hand corner. Feel free to join. Maybe if we pick up the light bow gun quickly, what we'll do is get a build going, and then after the build is done, maybe we'll go fight Safajiva anyways. Because my, my next goal is to build the Safajiva armor set, right? All right, let's go ahead and post this. Master rank is going to be under events, I assume. Scars tell the whole story. I'm looking for the Horizon Zero Dawn. The Survivor. I think it's this one. Into the Frozen Wilds. I think that was the one we did before. And I think the Survivor might be... Says, even if this is the Proving, that sounds like Horizon Zero Dawn. So we're going to grab the Survivor. What are you doing, boy? You need sleep. That's right, I need sleep. I need to see the doctor for my brain tumor. Let's grab our sticky ammo. Oh, man, the whole time I was watching the C-SPAN, all the people in our politics, I was, like, hurling the whole time. Yeah, there's just one thing I ask from politicians, that they be smarter than me. They should be smarter than me. That is all I want from my politicians. Left, right, doesn't matter. They need to be smarter than me. And half the people, it just felt like they were older than me. And that was it. I was, I was hurling the whole time. It was so bad. It was really bad. I couldn't believe how, how like, awful it was, the whole thing. Let's run over and talk to this guy. I won't, I won't bother you guys with all the details. Oh, you can't talk to him. Hmm. I already ate a meal. We have Scarlet, Culper Mickey, and Shinigami. How's it going, guys? It's the Stygian one. Oh good, that's the one we selected. Sealed and Awakening Alchemy. A new tutorial was added. Grab some honey. How's it going, Sock Lucard? Hey, Game Economist, how's the hunts going? We just started, so we will find out in a moment. Hopefully we will. Got a little background music going for myself. I, I don't know if I should turn it up for you guys to hear it. It's kind of fast-paced music, so it doesn't really match this, what we're playing. Probably just get me demonetized anyways. Idol King says, bother us with the details. Let's go ahead and get started. Well, you know, it was um, the... Uh, United States has three bodies of government, the House, which is Congress, the Senate, and then the presidency. And so they want to impeach him in the House. And they were having like their hearings or something like that, where they're all walking up and making their arguments. And so many of the arguments were so freaking bad. It'd be some guy would walk up and he'd be like, I was a soldier. And that's why you can't impeach Donald Trump. And then somebody else would walk up and be like, I'm the first Latina. And that's why we have to impeach Donald Trump. That was the their whole argument in a nutshell. It's like, what are you talking about? There'd be these little old ladies that walked up and they got like their hoop earrings and they got their special little outfit. And I'm thinking like, why are you running my country? You should be out shopping at the mall or something. You look like, it was just nuts. I was like, you don't look like a leader even a little bit. Even a little bit. You're like my great-grandma, basically. Why is great-grandma running the country? I wouldn't let great-grandma run my business. Got great-grandma running your whole country. And there were plenty of competent people, too. 
Uh, but they, very often, they didn't actually speak about the reasons, you know, we were having the impeachment. They, it was always, like, some personal thing. It's really terrible arguments. And I was, like, the whole time I was, like, sick. I was, like, oh, uh. <laughs> oh, man. And they all had, like, this same message. They'd all repeat the same message, blah, blah, blah. Oh, it was, um, I was, like, this is why I didn't watch any of the impeachment crap starting with this. Because it was, like, it was... I don't know. The whole thing gave me cancer, for sure. It gave me a brain tumor. That's what I felt like when I was watching it. I was like, I can't watch this. I can't watch this. But it's like I couldn't look away either. It's like a car crash or something. You ever watch a car crash compilation? I recommend watching a car crash compilation. It was very similar. 5 a.m. card stream? Maybe. If we had enough viewers, we could do a 5 a.m. card stream. 5 a.m. card stream. Okay, Boomer. Yeah, there's like... You know, I never really thought about it too hard before, but there's a ton of old people running the country. Really old. Okay, not not like, I'm a CEO, I'm 50 years old. Like, 70 years old politician that can barely talk. And you're thinking, you've got a prepared statement on paper that you can barely read. Why the fuck are you in charge of anything? Much less, like, you're in charge of the country? How? How did you get into that position? You look drunk. You're, like, shaking. I would not have you run anything. You should be in a retirement home. Somebody smarter and younger than you. Because your brain gets old and your brain doesn't work as well when you're old. That's the truth, okay? It's going to happen to me. It's going to happen to you. We're going to be old farts someday. And we're not going to be as smart as we were when we were young. But it's like, I guess apparently I can just go into government at that point. Crazy. It's like, businesses would definitely not hire you to run their company as a CEO. Because you would run the company into the ground. But you can be our politician instead. What? How did this happen? And it doesn't matter what side you're on. Left or right or center or whatever thing you have in your country. So a lot of Americans are probably asleep tonight. So we probably have a lot of people watching from the UK or around there. It's like, if your politician is so old, they can barely articulate themselves. They can barely read a prepared note. They're too old. We need, like, an age limit or something. I don't know. Oh, snap. It's a really interesting thing to be talking about because we got some really old politicians... Oh, he's gonna wake up. We got some really old politicians, um... running for president in the U.S. I don't know if you guys have that in your country, have problems like that in your country. It's like you wouldn't want the queen to run England, you know what I mean? You love the queen, but you wouldn't want her to run England. It just wouldn't make any sense, you know? A lot of these people are lifelong politicians. They have, they've been doing it for like 30 years, and it, it doesn't necessarily mean they're the best politician. It just means they're the best at getting the job. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. Don't kill me. <laughs> or it is Mother Merkel. Yeah, Merkel's been in power for a while, too, as, uh, from what I understand. Although, I, I think, if I understand correctly, Merkel is going to be leaving politics uh, soon enough. You know... Probably around your 50s and 60s is okay, but anything after 50s and 60s, you really got to, I don't know, you need like an IQ test after 50s and 60s. I don't know what to say. Again, it's not like a, it's not like a left-right thing. It's just, uh, you know, you're kind of old. Why don't you, why don't you retire, go on a cruise, maybe? It's, it's hard to say, you know, we make people retake the driving test as they get older. Why is that? Because when you get older, you get slower. That's that's just a that's just a fact. I was at the DMV the other day, wanting to commit suicide, not alive, because uh, you know the DMV is slow as hell. It's the the worst thing I've ever been to when it comes to a service. And one of the things I noted was there were people going for the driver's test. There was a bunch of old people, a bunch of old people taking the driver's test again. Maybe there's a rule where I live and I didn't know about it, but apparently if you get old enough, you have to take the driver's test again. That's because they're making sure you're all there. <laughs> they're making sure the dementia hasn't set in, right? They're making sure that uh, you're fast enough mentally to, to be driving on the road and not posing a risk to anyone. Well, if you can get old enough to pose a risk to people on the road while you're driving, you can be old enough to be too old to be a leader. That's just how it is. Holy shit. All hail Queen Karen, bringer of re. We can do both. The people in politics are usually so stubborn that 
anything young people say is irrelevant. Well, and it's not like young people can't be stupid too. Young people can be very naive or they can expect too much change too quickly uh, or, you know, I, I don't know. There's, there's plenty of mistakes that young people can make. Elderly people come with a lot of experience. They've seen a lot of history, if you want to think of it that way. But dude, if you're shaking and you can't read a prepared statement, you're too old at that point. It's time to retire. Be an advisor to the younger politicians. You can still be in politics, just, uh, you know, don't take on the primary role. Like, what the hell? Jesus Christ. It legit had me concerned. I was, I, I was turning to my wife and I was like, these people lead our country. <laughs> that's what I was that's what I was telling her I was like this guy can barely walk because he's obese he's an obese old man and he can't talk properly like he they have like time limits for how long they can talk and he can't he can't finish talking within his time limit so this big obese old man and it's like babe he can barely talk he can barely walk he's the leader of our country how did this happen how did we get to this point nobody else there's millions of us nobody else could do this job so I, I swear to God, the smartest people don't go into to government. They go into business. The smartest people in our country, they don't want to work for the U.S. government. They want to work for Amazon. They don't want to go into government. They want to work for Microsoft. Just to make some real money, you know what I mean? Some real money and some huge innovations. You don't probably do that. And what, is, what is politics other than like a more formal uh, celebrity, basically? You're like a... You're like a different kind of celebrity. You're a C-SPAN celebrity. Nobody even cares about C-SPAN celebrities. But you're basically running for a celebrity. I don't know. Maybe it's starting to just be traditional celebrity even at this point. Like Tulsi Gabbard on the Seth Rogen show. She's basically just a regular celebrity, right? When, when you hit that point. Come on over. You all be celebrities. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> we vote for them. Right, I suppose we I suppose we do, but it's like I was saying, your smartest people don't actually want to work in the government. Nice job. Can we get this guy paralyzed? What is he dropping by the way? Crystal Burst, Piercing Pod, Scissions and Ogre Material, Dracophage Bug, Ree! Oh, he's paralyzed. Come on, put my weapon away. Freaking PlayStation controller. <laughs> so yeah, I was losing my brain cells, what's left of them, watching the goddamn impeachment hearings. And, uh, I don't know, I just feel worse about my country after watching it. The whole the whole thing seemed terrible. Let's jump over to the, use the Farcaster here. I don't want to know how many millions of dollars were spent so a bunch of old people can yell at each other. God damn, that just, it like makes me bitter inside. There's people who need money in my country, and they're, they're using the money to just basically yell at each other. They're like, no you. Very frustrating. Game Economist, Game Economist is just like my dad. FBI will probably be at his front door tonight, right now. What? <laughs> Your stamina is low as frick. This is live, really? No, this is not live. LMAO, that tiny sl sliver of stamina. Let's go ahead and grab some of this. We'll grab some hot drink. We'll fix that right up. Wait, do we pass it up? Are smart people selfless? I think smart I think if I had to guess I would say smart people are probably more often selfless than dumb people. You would think that smart people are like ha 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 they're like shrewd and they're cruel. I don't think that's true. I think smart people generally reach a stage in life where they're very successful and they're very prosperous cuz that's a, that's a part of being intelligent. You end up learning how to save money, you end up learning how to invest money, how to innovate. Uh, so in general, I would bet that smart people are more charitable than poor people because the funny thing about being poor is you don't have any money for charity. You don't have any money for charity when you're poor. You only have money for charity when you're already successful and rich. So, you know, you just don't even have the capacity. You just kind of get angry at everyone else and be like, where's my money at? Blue gleam. We got three blue gleam. I'm guessing that's the material we're after. 
America is doomed. Do I feel like America is doomed. Holy freaking sh... You know what I mean? I will go to America to vote for you. Oh, thank you, Alem. Need Celestial Wyvern Prince. Nice. Uh, that's true. We were talking about that yesterday. Uh, yeah, the previous stream. We needed that for certain uh, gems or something like that. Hot drink didn't even matter. So sad. <laughs> David says, no, don't drink it. <laughs> oh, is my mouse not working? There we go. I'm so used to Game Economist not drinking his hot drink, so I'm literally cured of my OCD. <laughs> yeah. Y'all seen the new Xbox mini fridge? I think it looks okay, actually. I don't think it looks that bad. Let's go ahead and post a new quest. The Survivor. What a name. Case in point, Bill Gates. Yeah, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, both of those guys have agreed to give, like, what was it, 99% of their wealth away? And it's like, it's not like, uh, you know, it's not like that's 100%, but still, it's they didn't have to do that. They chose to do that, and I, I find that very impressive. Uh, and, um, you know, you don't really ever hear of any politicians who want to raise your taxes or whatever, you never hear them saying, when I pass away, I'm going to give out 99% of my wealth. It's just all, I'm giving it all away. You never hear that. Yeah. Actually, actual altruism coming from the super wealthy. I got Spiceborne yesterday. What's a good early game, Lance? Early game, Lance, get the bone, Lance. Get the bone lance. Can someone tell me how to augment Safi's evil weapons? What guiding lance materials? Nobody tell them. It's a secret. It is super secret, and only the people who are part of the Cool Kids Club gets to know. Game Economist, I sent you something in Discord. Did you? Oops. Hold on. Let's see. Safajiva Burst Cannon. Hmm. No, uh, true spare shot? Or spare shot? Is that already on the build? Is that coming from the gun itself? Maybe it's coming from the gun itself. Spare shot. It's 2.30 a.m. Game Economist. What the frick? Still, I'm going to stick to the end of the stream. <laughs> I'm pretty freaking over getting new consoles all the time. To be honest, I could care less. Well, I'll, I'll get the new consoles when they come out. How long has it been? Like six or seven years? That seems about right. Yeah, the new console every six to seven years. That's fine. My console is is a new is a uh, it's one of the original old consoles, and it lasted me the whole time. I can't complain. I think it was actually designed well then. All right, come on. Just finish this real fast, and then we'll head out. Come on. So close. Come on, man. There it goes. All right. Stream be lagging for me, like a minute behind at least. I'm sorry to hear that. It says on my end, it says excellent co connection, uh, and there's no stream lag on my side. Has it already been six to seven years? Yes, it has. Can someone explain quantum physics to me, please? Uh, I never took quantum physics. Um. All I remember about it is that it works at a very, very, very tiny level with quarks and these really small matters. Hey, Game Economist, could you check out my Safi light bulb and sticky build? I could. New PS looks... <laughs> Luops says it looks like shit. There's a pattern you do know that. No, no patterns are allowed. Anyone who tries to pattern me is going to get the big... The big pee pee and the small poo poo. Why not play on PC? I don't know. Why not? I do still have OG Xbox One, so I guess I shouldn't complain, but the disc tray finally did finally take a poop, so. Oh, the disc tray stopped working? <laughs> who owns who owns physical games anymore? Nah, I'm just kidding. 
So what would you guys like to talk about tonight? We are farming up the Horizon Zero Dawn event quest to get the Storm Slinger upgraded. We can talk about anything you guys like. I mean, we're fighting Stygian Zenogre. What else is there to say about fighting him? I feel like, um, well, what, what's an interesting topic? This is Stygian Zenogre, right? I picked the right one? Yes. Uh, we could talk about how Star Wars is bombing at the box, not box office, but with the uh, critics. Critics who are reviewing Star Wars are giving it actually really bad grades, which is really not a good sign for Star Wars at all. Because usually, usually the critics are a little more forgiving with Star Wars, I would say. Well, they were for the uh, Last Jedi episode. So with the critics giving you already a bad grade, I feel like it's pretty guaranteed it's going to be a shit movie. Which would not surprise me. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Well, it would hurt if I didn't have my temporal mantle on. Let's go ahead and take this off now. We'll put down our help booster. Woo. Star Wars bombing is not a surprise. I know, right? I remember seeing the trailers and just thinking like, why do I care about any of these guys? I don't care about a single one of the new protagonists. There's the Poe guy, Finn guy, and Rey, who is, I don't even, she's so uninteresting. They didn't build a personality for her at all. She has like no personality. What is Rey's personality other than uh, I'm super powerful, and nobody had to train me to make me powerful. I, I literally just am good at everything. Because, I don't know, feminism. I, I couldn't tell you. If I if I didn't know that uh, Kathleen Kennedy was a feminist, I would be like, maybe it's just, just bad writing. But I, I, I don't think it's just bad writing. I think Kathleen Kennedy actually wanted Ray's character to be like that, because Kathleen Kennedy is a feminist. So that's that's pretty sad. Go ahead and place this down. Imagine your character... Sa it actually is sad for women because, you know, if you were really pro-girl, you would want her story to be more complex and satisfying. You know what I mean? Right? Like, if you were, if you really want to, to make progress for women in your writing, it's got to be good writing. That's By default, it's got to be good and interesting writing. So it's like... But that's the problem with trying to go with the political message rather than a story. Yeah, imagine if in Lord of the Rings... Frodo was a feminist, or Aragorn was a feminist, you know what I mean? It just uh, wouldn't be the same. It would, it would be like this weird propagandist movie. And I, I think that's how the previous episode of Star Wars kind of struck me. It was like this weird propagandist movie. Oh, set the animals free. I hate capitalism. Um, you know, girls are super, super awesome. I don't know. There was, there was a lot going on with that movie. Luke Skywalker sucks all of a sudden. Yeah. Ooh. I'm hoping that they remove her from whatever her job is, whatever her role is in her studio. Probably should have let that next sticky blow up. Would have gotten the damage bonus on it. Oh, did I just hit his paw? I did. You could land a lane on her forehead. <laughs> That's another thing, actually. A lot of people keep calling her, like, good-looking, pretty. I don't actually agree. She doesn't look that pretty. But maybe that's just me. Let's grab this glum grass bud. Hot pepper. Don't do it. Oh, my God, he did it. Frodo the Hobbit, feminist hero. I can see it now. Lord of the Rings reaching peak art because we have a strong feminist main character. It's like the other way around. The uh, political propaganda destroys the natural occurrence of events. You know, that's when story writing is really good. Is when it examines when it examines nature. I feel like that's when storytelling is really good. Is when it examines nature. It examines your know, timeless truths about life and reality. That's when story writing becomes very interesting because when you examine life that way, suddenly tragic and conflict kind of naturally unfold. Limited resources, 
the indifference of nature. Um, you know, those actually mostly cover it. Those are the source of most human problems. It's the fact that we grow old and die and there's not enough food. And you're born in unlucky, unfair circumstances and have to find a way to overcome those unlucky circumstances. Maybe you're posed with great danger when you do this. That is the heart of all storytelling. The heart of storytelling isn't, here's our political uh, belief system and how can we get the story to fit around that. That's like, when you do that, your story inevitably ends up being kind of garbage. It's, you're not going to write this, you're not going to write a good story. It's like if um, communist Russia had to write a story and they're like, all right, so the goal of the story is to make everyone else communist. You think that's going to be a well-written story? It's just not. It's going to be a piece of politi political propaganda and people are going to hear it. They're going to be like, ugh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Let's grab the Stygian Snorka material. Hey, whoever is in the session want to hunt with me, I posted a quest. Can you show the session ID again? No, I cannot. As they say, from old age comes wisem. How do you dodge with the switch axe? It's impossible. <laughs> you guys in the comment section. TGC, when do you think will the planet die out? Well, that's a great question because we know that it, it necessarily will die out. Eventually, the sun will get much older and then it'll explode. So no matter what, Earth is not a... You know, it's eventually going to be destroyed. It's not going to be livable at some point. Uh, so I don't know. It could be a very long time. We might, we might have crazy technology by the time it becomes a serious problem for the human race. But wouldn't it be interesting if the human race lives on for like fifty thousand years, you know, without falling apart, or maybe five hundred thousand years, however long it's going to take? Uh, we live that long, and the sun's dying. And let's say that we actually don't have a solution to it. Wouldn't that be crazy? Oh man, that would be really tough. We didn't actually have a solution at that point. <laughs> Who's falling down there? I think we lost a guy. That would be a uh, pretty big tragedy, you know what I mean? You have to roll on the floor in real life, otherwise it's impossible. <laughs> How do you dodge with the switch axe? It's a secret. Nobody tell him. <laughs> Nah, we going to Mars, says Luwap. Well, the Mars use Mars. Uh, no, Mars will have the same problem. Mars also uses the same sun as the Earth, so you know, is is we're gonna have to leave like our galaxy, basically our solar system. I mean, we're gonna have to leave our solar system, and uh, that's a pretty crazy idea. Pretty crazy. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's a late night. I can't use can't use my words as well as I would if it was morning time and I was well rested. Concept. That's the word. It's a pretty crazy concept, so you can't just go to Mars. The sun's going to disappear, right? There's no uh, no easy solution to that one. Anti is obviously better. What? <laughs> Don't do it. Oh, look at that. I'm out. If we don't have the technology to fix it by then, we suck. All the inner planets will be destroyed for sure. You can't fix a dying sun. Was watching a space show and they say the sun won't go out soon. They said about two to three billion more years. Well, I mean, that doesn't mean it's not a problem, though. So you're thinking, ah, that's human's problem in two to three billion years, right? That's what you're thinking. But you are assuming we'll, ex we'll exist for two to three billion years, right? That's the goal. The goal is for the human race not to stop existing. There's no, there's no reason why we shouldn't exist in two to three billion years, which means even though, yes, we do have a long time, we need to have a solution to there being no sun anymore. And that's kind of a, a, a big problem. I mean, it was like we were just saying, you can't just go to Mars. So we're talking about leaving our solar system, the whole human race leaving our solar system. Anyone who does not leave it is going to die with the uh, dying sun. You have to leave. So how are we going to, we, we have to have like technology that will take us to another solar system, one that has a, an Earth-like planet and a young sun, and we have to have a way to transport everyone over there. That's kind of what the, um, what was that movie, Interstellar? Yeah, from uh, the guy who made the Batman series. Uh, gosh, I can't remember his name. 
he, he makes pretty decent movies, right? Inception guy, right? He made Interstellar, and that's kind of the problem in Interstellar. The Earth is dying, uh, and we need some kind of solution to it dying, because if you don't have any kind of solution, you know, everyone on Earth just kind of disappears. Well, you got to transport everyone over to the next planet, and that's a really crazy idea to do that. After two billion years, aliens would have killed us. Nah, see, we don't know that. Humanity will not leave the galaxy. To infinity and beyond. Big fan from Korea, please shout out my friend Faisal Messi. I think I said that right. Uh, thanks for uh, saying hello, man. What do you think of the way we can only get Dracolite? What do you think of the way we can only get Dracolite only in the siege? What? <laughs> Thought Destroyer says, took me 70 potential to get Teostra set bonus on my longsword. Nolan, Christopher Nolan, yeah. So he wrote Interstellar, and the Interstellar movie, although it's got like some goofy parts to it, like, oh, what's the extra force in physics? Oh, it's love, or something like that. Even though there's some goofy ideas in there, one idea is not goofy. Eventually, planet Earth will, will die. It's not like a maybe it'll die. Unless we have some sort of technology that can replace the sun, which we don't, and I really doubt we ever will, um, we're going to have to do something about this the sun getting old and dying. And that, I mean, I don't know, maybe there is a way to stop it from getting old any further than it already is. Maybe that will be the new technology, but we know in, in whatever it is, two to three billion years, we do have to have a solution. And it's really interesting to think like, man, well, what is that going to be? How are you going to pick up everyone on the planet? and then relocate them to another galaxy. It's, it's like impossible. But you know eventually we're going to have to do that. So we got plenty of time to work on it. In theory, we have plenty of time. Uh, but we don't know what that solution actually looks like. It'll be, it'll be tough. Imagine being one of the humans, like let's say all of the human race isn't brought. Like imagine being doomed to stay on your planet and die. It's like, well, you were born. Hey, how's it going? And then they're like, yeah, but you're going to die. <laughs> you, we got to get you off the planet or that's it we've got uh two years left and the sun's it's a little more complicated than that isn't it like so it's not like the sun's awesome and then suddenly it just explodes it doesn't really work that way the, the sun's basically going to kind of change as it gets older so i don't really know what that means but and uh, you know it might not even be the sun might not even end up being the biggest problem there could be other problems that make earth unlivable all right here we go we're going with the upgrade Yay! Transfer everything into a ship like Wally. <laughs> now, wasn't there a bow? I probably don't have it. There's a bow from the Horizon Zero Dawn event, and I never unlocked it. It's from the base game, so I've got to unlock that. What about the armor? Looking for the armor. Is that going to be in the next event? Maybe the armor is in the next event. Man, it's hot in here. i got to turn the heater down. It's always so cold in the bedroom, but it's hot out in the living room. That's why we turn it up. All right. You may have, you may leave the solar system, but humans will never be able to leave the Milky Way due to constant expansion of the universe. So what Ugo Dube is talking about is uh, the we know that everything's constantly expanding away from itself. So the universe is everything's spreading out, and so one of the interesting problems is as we perhaps find faster ways to travel across the universe, the universe is getting bigger anyway, so it's getting harder to travel across the universe. So that's the problem he's speaking about, but who knows, man, maybe we'll have something like Star Trek and it won't matter. Who knows? But he's correct. It, it will be harder in three billion years to travel to the next uh, galaxy or whatever, uh, solar system. So Depth Storm Slinger is upgraded now, huh? It's a full armor set, TGC. Ah, thank you, Captain Soldier. Did you craft full Safi yet? Not yet. Here it is. Shield Weaver. Health boost. Thunder attack. Thunder attack. 
Resentment. Resentment. Weakness exploit. Hmm. So you get Thunder Attack 5, which is good. What is Ancient Armory? Okay. Ancient Armory, huh? And you get Resentment 5 as well. And that probably pairs with the ability on the Light Bow Gun. And Weakness Exploit. Hmm. Although Weakness Exploit won't necessarily help versus uh, Safajivo. What do you need to craft this, by the way? Stygian Zenogar Dragonhold. We need five of those. Dragonhold? What the hell's a Dragonhold? Oh, hold on. Just let some space god throw our flat planet like a frisbee. What? Also, do we have things on the wish list to finish, um... How do you look up stuff in your wish list? Thunder Attack 3 with the 4 and 2 and 1 slot. Thanks, Capcom. What about the Palico armor? Oh, yes. Okay, we'll take a look at the Palico armor in a moment. Actually, no, we'll do it right now. Let's get it done. Forge Palico equipment, there we go. It's gonna be under full armor sets as well. Frost Claw. Hey, there we go. Huh. It's pretty cool, I guess. If you're into that. Check out the Palico Armor. Start menu for wish list. Yes, the wish list is over here. It says I need five Stygians and Urga Dragon Hold. Hmm. Speaking of which, one of the things we needed to do. I need to talk to this lady over here. Boomer Economist? How would you say that? You look well. Err. Celestial Wyverian print. Manage investigations. Registered. Let's start taking some of these down. We don't need all of them, right? We definitely don't need Shamos. I don't know why we'd need the, those. I don't think we need great gyros. We've got a ton of glavinous here. What the hell? Just gonna undo a bunch of them. All right. Yes. What did I miss? Here it is. So I've got a Stygian Zenogar over here. <gasps> Excuse me. Just looking around. All right. So I'm wondering whether to craft that full armor set of hers and um, be a woman for a while. What do we have going on right now? Thunder ammo is already low.
Okay, we get a normal reload speed too now. Let's go craft the Safajiva armor next. I think that's what I want to do next. Now, no. Here's the he uh, the chest. No, and then the arms. We are missing a Zenogar Sky Emerald, along with other Safajiva parts, a Vulcanic Crystal, and Safajiva two Safajiva tails and three Safajiva wings. Wow, so tails and wings, huh? Meld items. No, not items. Meld. Yes, under, I, I did that right the first time. Just losing my mind a little bit. Why did they decide to do this so weirdly? <laughs> it's an ogre sky world. Wow, I have five of these. And the other one was Vilcana Crystal. All right, so we have that. We we need some more Safajiva parts. Now I say, we got weakness exploit. Can we drop that and trade it with Max Might? Let's see if we can drop that, trade it with Max Might real fast. I say we take this out and give it a test. Two Tenderizer, three Tenderizer. We have two Mighty Jewels. Very mighty. We'll take another throttle. How much throttle does that give us? Full throttle. Okay. And we need thunder ammo as well. Everyone who has joined the session, we're going to do Safajiva now. Because I know you guys aren't getting tired of Safajiva. <laughs> Alright. Easiest way to get gold prints is to do low rank, high rank SOS quests with master rank gear. Yes, he's talking about using the hunter helper program to get special rewards. Flex in real life, then your character will do the weapon post. That's exactly right. Wow, David is so knowledgeable. Okay, so we've picked up the new Storm Slinger. <sighs> we have the new Storm Slinger. And we've seen the... I don't even know her name. We've seen the full armor set from the Horizon Zero Dawn event quest. Weaver armor set. Looked okay. Actually, may, from the look of it, I think the Ray Zhang weapons might pair well with that. Safajiva Siege is complete. Let's go ahead and collect our rewards. Hey, you. Well, look at all this Dracolite. Two, three, four. Exit. <laughs> oh, Publass. Oh, Publass. So, for those of you listening, we have, um, I need Safajiva Tails. Safajiva Tails and Wings. So, if you want to help me with that, feel free to help me with that. Am I going to have a Chef's Choice Platter? Yeah, let's have a Chef's Choice Platter. Who cares? Is it bad when you're constantly getting aggro from Safajiva when you're healing Horn player? It just means you're so good, man. You're so good at the game. Wow, I get, I get the aggro all the time, bro. 
I'm gonna have a little bite of my snacks. Look, another bear cat. Our bear cats can be bear cat friends. Isn't that awesome? Now they will be best bear cat friends. Run along, children. Look at this poor cat. Bruh. <laughs> what? Tail time, that's right. <clears throat> Your objective is to slay the beast. Don't lose sight of it. When that thing's Not going to use a long sword to cut the tail. When the energy pull is dried up, Sadly, no, we're going to test out this long, uh, light bow gun. Use that chance to follow it down. Chip away at it to break off parts or use your surroundings to damage it. I just ate a cat hair. Cool. Excellent. Get these down. Really? Wow, two flips for nothing. Okay, so the ammo is still not rapid fire. But once again, you are getting seven shots of it. Wow, we're dealing some crazy damage. Attack of... Uh, I remember last time when we were reviewing the light bow gun, we were talking about how it's one of the highest damage light bow guns. I think it was the highest damage light bow gun in the game just by attack values. So it had the highest attack value. By the way, how do you use the um oh right, there's a special mod that lets you use that powered up shot. Alright, he's down. We'll heal after he gets back up. Damn, look at the damage output. Per shot? Jesus Christ, it's like doing over 100 damage per shot. Whee! You should use the special mod. Yeah, I was uh, just thinking about that. Get under the head there. Is he under the rock yet? See, I don't think he is yet. Oh, pushing him the wrong way. Oh. Oh my god. Backing up from that.
Oh my god. Oh, there's still the uh, health booster here. I wonder if we can get lucky and the tail gets touched by the boulder. Probably not. Oh, who keeps pushing him the wrong way, guys? Oh, you guys are so bad at this. Jesus. I mean, unless in your mind you're like, nah, we're going to the other boulder. He was already closer to the other boulder, so it didn't make sense to push him that way. <laughs> Damn, dude, stop shooting me. I knocked it down. Nope, didn't land on him. It just feels like we're running out of time to actually land it. Alright, well, I'll get on the other side. I guess you actually do have to knock him over to it twice. Which is really sad. <laughs> oh my god. Too bad we couldn't have done that earlier. But now it doesn't make sense to do it because I already dropped the boulder. Woo, look at that tail damage. That still reached me. That's really annoying. Wow, you guys are pushing him the wrong way again. Guys, now that this boulder's down, we gotta go to the other boulder. Jesus. Look, they're pushing him toward the wrong boulder over and over again. Oh my god, you guys. I think I'm out of thunder. Gotta love randoms. What? The funny thing is, these guys aren't even randoms. These guys are, um, they're actually in the stream. First, they wouldn't push him under that other boulder, the one on the right. And, uh, so I dropped the boulder too early, wondering if maybe it would touch the tip of his tail. But it didn't. And then after that boulder was dropped, everyone should have gotten on the other side of him to get him under the other boulder. But everyone's, like, on the wrong side of him. It's crazy. It's like they don't care at all. They're just blindly attacking. It's like... Well, you could just blindly attack, but push him, push him the right direction. You can, like, you can be as aggressive as you want, but it makes more sense to be pushing him the right direction. Look, he's completely under the wrong boulder. Amazing. That's 4,000 damage, guys. Oh my god, I didn't know he even used to move like that. Don't do it. I tricked him. You hit him on the other side, so if you want him to go left, you tack him on the right side. That's right. So you you face you face yourself. Yeah, he's going to the next area. Wow, guys, that was so shit. We could have we could have knocked both boulders on him for eight thousand damage. Instead, you guys were unga boonga on him, and so you lost eight thousand damage. You could have been unga boonga the whole time. You just unga boonga from the right side, or all together from one side. And then once he's under the boulder, you get a free four thousand damage and a knockdown. We could have done that twice. But you guys were just so focused on being Oonga Boonga that you, you missed out on all that. That's some random stuff. You don't want to be like a random. You don't want to be a random. Especially not in the live stream. You gotta show everyone how good you are. What a good boy you are. Alright, so I'm still gonna focus my damage on the tail to help with the tail. Breaking the tail. 8,000 damage, guys. 
hard to uh, hard to, to make up for 8,000 damage. It takes a lot of extra time. I tried to roll that. I, I failed to roll it. Look at that. I'm dealing the most damage. We do have a, a great sword on the team. That move is always so confusing. Oh my god, did I walk into that? I thought it was done. Puts him to sleep in stage two. You don't put him to sleep in stage two. It makes no sense. Oh man, somebody here does not know what the, what he's doing in the Safi siege. Stage two is an easy stage. He doesn't really use his most powerful moves in stage two. So since it's very hard to put him to sleep, you save your sleep attacks for stage three when he's most difficult. Because you're 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 at best going to get two sleeps, but you will be lucky even to get two because it's so hard to put him to sleep. Of course, it could be somebody using a sleep weapon. Oh, it is. It has to be somebody using a sleep weapon. Well, then my next question for you would be, why the hell would you use a sleep melee weapon? That's terrible. You could use, like, a sleep um, bow gun or bow, but if you use a sleep melee weapon, you can't control when the monster goes to sleep. Oh, that still reached me! <laughs> God damn. That's the end of my health booster. Finally got around recovering my Discord account and installing it on the phone. Joined your Discord in another five servers. I really want to see if I can find a proper lobby for Safajiva. Oh my god, I was reading your comment and I let myself get fried. <laughs> Dick says, great, a sleep greatsword is pretty good. I don't agree. Elementless greatsword is pretty good. Elementless. Elementless. Think about the amount of damage you're losing when you have a lower raw damage than a elementless greatsword. Now, if, if it happens to be that the highest raw damage greatsword also has the sleep ailment on it, Yin, you can make an, you can make an argument at that point, but I do not know if that's the case. I highly doubt it is. Dude, I just died twice in a row? What the hell? Oh, that's really bad. Stage 2 is so easy, guys. If you get the boulders, but I got the Oonga Boonga teammates. I just died twice in a row. I'm the Oonga Boonga teammate. Let's go grab some more fresh ammo. Jesus Christ. He got me in like two moves. You know what? Part of that's probably because on the PlayStation, I don't have any of my armor upgraded. Sleep Greatsword may be good on solo. Soilo. But on Siege like this, I don't think so. Safajiva has the highest raw. Well, even in that case, it would make more sense to me to take the highest raw, but then also an element on that, because you'll just get the bonus elemental damage each hit. Alright, let's try not to die. <laughs> oof. Yeah, it was a big oof. Can't believe how quickly he killed me there. It was just two hits. So I kind of understand stage two a little better. Stage two is similar to stage three in the way that he uses his ult, but you have these static boulders that never go away. Whereas in stage three of the fight, the boulders do go away. They blow up. Oh, I missed the roll. He's after one of our teammates. Jesus Christ. 
Stop. When he goes to the next stage, I'm going to see if I can eat for safeguard in case nobody else has. I don't think anyone ate for safeguard or insurance. Nice job on the tail sever. I'm going to go straight for carving that. Well, that didn't take long. Dude, that's how he killed me last time. Look how much damage he did there. Alright, so we don't have to target his head anymore. We can target... I'm, I'm sorry, his tail anymore. We can target whichever body part we want. See how much damage we're getting on the wings. It's, it's okay. The problem is the wings aren't really positioned well for the elemental ammo to pierce it. Ouch. Back broken. Don't break your back. Okay, we've still not carved the tail. Get damn wings for the armor. I agree. I'm worried if one more person dies, I'm not going to get the carve on the, the tail. But he's targeting me, so... If I'm not smart about it, I might die trying to carve the, carve the tail. Damn, dude, he's going to kill me with the physical! Really? <laughs> so I think we can shoot through the wing right now. Get this carb going. <laughs> There we go, Safaji Balash. I need one more of those. Wait, did, did I only get the one? What the hell? Stop making me pick up the piercing pod. I don't care about the piercing pod. What the frick? God, this game. <laughs> ah, shard. Well, maybe we'll get it in the reward screen anyways. Gotta stop hitting the wrong button here. We can't eat feline safeguard. We don't have the ingredients. Whoops. Whoopsies. Whoopsie daisy. Alright. Who even wants safeguard? Safeguard's dumb. Who even wants it? I don't want it. Certainly not me. Safajiva will leave soon. Oh, he's gonna leave soon. How's it going, JV? He says, damn it, I didn't know you was on. That's right, JV, I was on. JV... You should see my sleep schedule. It's so bad. I sleep for like four hours. And I stay at work and all night. Trying to run two channels. And my sleep is just like terrible. I, I like fall asleep in the middle of the day now. Like, trying to catch up on my sleep. and uh, Or my wife will be off work and it'll be like, okay, well I'll just hang out with her then. Right? It's not perfect. Not ideal at all. Very inideal.
Oh, snap. We got him to stop. Oh, he's in a super critical state. Ouch. Cool if we could break his chest, but I really don't think we can. He's gonna be tired, right? No way. Time's up. All right, sweet. Don't forget to like the stream, big peepee -pee if like stream. <laughs> We've had a pretty small audience this stream. That's because it's at an unusual time. It's very late at night. Is okay for YouTubers to take breaks? I call those small peepee -pee YouTubers. <laughs> I'm just joking. I don't feel like I need a break. I, uh, it's more of the other way around, actually, if anything, JV. I enjoy working YouTube videos so much for you guys that I end up staying too late, staying up too late doing it, and it kind of messes up my sleep, that's all. Poison Duration Up got buffed in Iceborne and now doubles the poison damage over time. Oh, shit. It's OP. Poison duration up is the new meta. It's the new meta. Frost charm, charm, and master's charm, huh? So let's see. We did get one tail. Hey, you. Let's get it going again because we got to get more tail and we got to get more wing as well. Crypto Knight says, "I just got off work. Glad to see you streaming." Hey, here's a fun question for my audience. How many of you guys are from the United States? How many of you guys are from uh, Europe? Since I'm streaming at 3 a.m. in the morning, I'm betting that it's morning time. Or, yeah, it's going to be roughly like 8 or 9 or 10 uh, a.m. for you guys over in Europe. So I probably have a mostly European audience right now. Hey, partner. Poison is useful. Why would you... Poison's the worst ailment. I'm just kidding. Wow, Scarlet working really hard on her cat here. Or his cat. Monster on World Discord, there are lots of players there. Yes, we have a LFG Discord. There is a link in the description of the live stream. We're getting very close to hitting 25,000 people in the Discord. And there's typically over 4,000 people active in the Discord at any moment. Meaning that there's people actually on it talking with each other. You should see the number of messages that get sent in a day. It's ridiculous. People talk like crazy. I'm Australian, America, Canada. Wow. UK, US, Europe, USA. I'm from Eastern US. Just worked not the night shift. US, 8 p.m. Australian, America. Which is better, blast or poison? Uh, poison. It's 4.20 p.m. right now in Springfield, Massachusetts. Australia, I thought the stream is about to finish. Indonesia, blaze it. Blast, Netherlands, India. Wow, okay, so there's a pretty good mix of people here. Um, when I look at my, my geographic, my audience by its like geographic breakdown, most of my audience does come from America. What's interesting, my second largest audience, you would think, comes from the UK and Canada. But actually, my second largest audience comes from Germany. Isn't that wild? I did not expect that. Second largest audience comes from Germany. And then after Germany, it's the UK and Canada. Check Discord for assistance. What? Blast is better for breaking parts, but poison deals more damage. I remember being a mod for a server with 1,000, and I thought that, and I thought that was hard to manage. It's not that bad uh, having 25,000 people in our Discord. We got a lot of mods and moderators. 
mods and admins, I should say. So I feel like that probably helps. Ooh, did I not eat? I thought I ate. In fact, I did not. I did not eat. Wow, Moxie. What about Australia? Yeah, Australia's up there too, but uh, it, it goes the United States, and then it goes Germany, and then I believe it goes the UK, and then Canada, and so I would bet that Australia's roughly next. Deutschland loves this game, as I hear. I'm from Illinois. Also, how many personal pronouns are you willing to concede in polite conversation? There are two pronouns. No, I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean, Calamifragger? Do you mean, am I going to be using, like, a bunch of days and uh, weird made-up pronouns? Because I'm not into the weird stuff. Go ahead and put on the temporal mantle. One thing you should know about me is I'm a very disagreeable and rude person in real life. And I do not ever feel bad about it. Because I'm crazy. I'm a crazy guy. I actually love, love conflict. Conflict and argument. I like thrive off of it. It makes me feel good. I get like addicted to it. That's a good way to say it. I get addicted to it. I'm over it. <laughs> Where's that 0.01% from Saudi? Hmm, I don't know. I wonder if I do have a, any audience from Saudi Arabia. I can look it up actually. Would you guys like to... Why don't I do a quick lookup of it? I should be able to see it in my analytics. This would be fun. Top countries. We're going to see more. Okay. So the main country is the United States by a lot. Does that have any percent? Okay. 45% of my audience is from the U.S. 45%. Oh, he's going to roar. And then what's interesting is 6% of my audience is actually... I didn't get grabbed, right? 6% of my audience is from Germany, and that's the second largest audience I have. So 45 from the US, 6% from Germany, and then after Germany is actually not Canada, it's the UK at 5%. So 5% of my audience is from the UK, uh, and then after the UK, you have Canada at 4.4%. Now after Canada, you don't actually have Australia after Canada, I have the Philippines, which is so funny because uh, my grandma's Filipino. So I get 3.4% of my audience from uh, the Philippines. So that is, what, what would that be? Number five? One, two, three, four, five. So yeah, my fifth largest audience comes from the Philippines of all places. I really did not expect that. After that, you have Indonesia. And then after that, you have Malaysia. So both of those have 2.7 and 2.4%. Finally... At 2.3%, we have Australia. So, huh, I actually do not get... Maybe it's because in Australia, you guys already have a lot of crazy monsters over there. So you're like, eh, I don't need Monster Hunter. I bet that's it. You guys don't feel obligated to fight crazy monsters. You've already got too many crazy monsters. So let's see. Somebody says Saudi Arabia, right? Let's see if I can find it. Find it. Saudi Arabia is 0.6%. Wow, the guy... Uh, wait, what did he say? He says 0.01, right? I think he says zero yeah he says 0 0.01 it is 0. Uh, I'm sorry let me run back to that where I, I said 0 0.06 right bring me back where was I Netherlands Singapore Mexico Brazil where did it go I just had it oh here it is again no so Saudi Arabia is not 0 0.01 it's 0 0.6 0 0.6 percent so it's not a full percent, but it's not as bad as a tenth of a per uh, tenth of, uh, wait, wait, am I saying that right? 0 0.6 per, yeah, that's a fraction of a percent. It's confusing when you say something like fraction of a percent. <laughs> Damn, you're far part Filipino? So my eth eth I can't say it, ethnicity, my breakdown is my grandfather is British, right? So he's he's got UK, actually my last name is it comes from a town in England. That's where my last name comes from. Uh, so that's my grandfather. And he was in the US Navy. 
and he married a girl in the Philippine Islands because, you know, that's what you do when you're in the Navy, you go traveling. So he, he meets sexy foxy grandma in the Philippines. And then on my mother's side, my grandfather is German and my grandmother is Irish. And both of them have passed away, unfortunately. So I don't, I don't, I, they passed away when I was pretty young. They passed away when I was like, I think eight and 11 years old. Eight for my grand, grandfather. So I was real young when he passed away, but I still remember it. And then 11, when my grandmother passed away, she passed away shortly after he did. Put all these down. So I, I didn't really get to meet them in any capacity. Like, I met them as a child, and that's all my memories of them. But yeah, so grandma and grandpa on mom's side, German and Irish. And then on my dad's side, English and Filipino. So real heavy mix of uh, genes, right? Welcome, welcome, Saudi people. <laughs> Finally bought the expansion two weeks ago, crafted the full Safajiva set, and killed my first Silver Rathalos today. Nice. Okay, we better get moving. I have a feeling we're not going to get any Safajiva tail, just based on the, uh, we've got two gun lancers in here. Guys, I need that Safi tail. Sexy foxy grandma, that's right. Well, my grandma from the Philippines is really, she was a really good looking woman. So it doesn't surprise me that my dad, uh, my, not my dad, my grandfather ended up marrying her. She was like, I remember, cause I haven't seen her in a long time actually. Cause as some of you know, I've kind of left my family. Um, but the last time I remember seeing her, she looked really good for a, you know, grandma. She looked pretty healthy and young. That Asian gene probably. What kind of gene Levi's? In my opinion, Safajiva set is only meta for elemental charge blade. I hear it's also good for the light bow guns too, which is one of the reasons why we're unlocking it. I don't think the gun lancers. Oh, did somebody trade weapons? Scarlet's got dual blade. Dual blade. That's a lot of damage on the tail. Look at that. Zero point six. At least fifteen people here. <laughs> Look at that dodge. I didn't even have to see his face. I just kind of knew. Learning to dodge roars is very satisfying feeling because it's pretty difficult. It's fairly difficult. There's a small iframe available for it. You have to, your timing has to be really good. And then when you don't get when you don't get ward, you're able to just, I don't know, you're just able to deal damage for a, a really nice large chunk of free time, you know? Have you tried all the Filipino dishes? Yeah, I get asked that a, a lot. And, and the truth is, I, I did. Growing up, um, my grandparents, my, my grandmother, you know, they're grandparents, so it's kind of a traditional family. She did all the cooking. So she did all the Filipino dishes, and then my, my dad loved to cook. And he knew all the Filipino dishes. He was constantly making Filipino dishes. And it was like a thing to do whenever we were getting like, uh, whenever somebody was visiting from his side of the family, they would always make some Filipino dish. And uh, on a pretty pretty casual occasions, we would have chicken adobo too, because we, we all just liked it. And chicken adobo, for those who don't know what it is, it's really not, it's, it's not that different from just like chicken teriyaki, except you're going to have like a few extra flavors in it. Uh, that the Philippines have added to it, basically. It's very similar to chicken teriyaki. Them gene pools, we all get. Why you don't show that face? <laughs> what? What do you guys think are the best melee weapons for Safajiba? Best melee weapons? I don't know what you mean by best melee weapons. Are you suggesting that the Insect Glaive isn't as good as the Longsword? You, sir, are a racist. Closeted... Closeted melee weapon racist. I can't believe... This is 2019, dude. How are you not believing that all of the melee weapons are made equal? They're all equally perfect. Still trying to cut that tail, guys. Whee! Honestly, I'm waiting to see you upload a video for Light Bogan Heavy Bogan with the Safajiva set. 
yeah, I probably, you know, I've I've done pretty well with the videos that I have posted. I have a lot of videos I'd like to work on. Um, you know, I think that running the second channel, the card channel, has slowed me down a little bit on the main channel. But the problem is, the card channel videos are doing really well. Like, they're doing surprisingly well. I didn't think they would do so well, and they are. Like, some of the... Oh, gosh. So, obviously, one of the most important measurements is how well the videos are able to earn money through something like ad revenue. And it, it sounds crazy, but the card videos come pretty close to my main channel. And it's not even a large channel. It's got, like, I don't know, one one hundredth of the number of subscribers so I was like wow what, how is it performing so well it doesn't even make sense to me but it is so uh, I've been giving it a, f a fair amount of my attention from testing I found out that the cooling decoration is useless but 20 fire resist prevents pin deaths and you stay at 1 HP cool that sounds like a very interesting tip is to just bring 20 fire resist you really only need your fire resist to be at 5, and then you just eat for elemental resist large. So that would be an even better tip, probably. Alright, we've only got two two more shots of this thunder ammo. Time for me to get out of here. We'll use the easy farca. Actually, we'll use the easy dust alive for you guys. And I'm going to easy far cast out. 1.66k subs, I think. 205 says, I love the card channel. Game Economist got me hooked on collecting again. Right. I'm enjoying it so much. But I, I think it's because the live streams last for like two hours, and then those live streams are actually able to compete with some of the content I put out on my main channel. And it, I didn't expect that. I kind of expected that channel to just be this side hobby thing that I don't really pay too much attention to. It's like, no, it's having a lot of success over there. The pretty sick dark rye is dope. Yeah, I've got a few dark rice. I'm really happy too now. I finally, I kind of reached a point that I was hoping to reach. I got three of those Team Rocket booster boxes, the first edition ones. And between those three boxes, it's like $12,000 between those three boxes. It's like, whew. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Oh, let's beat him up. I don't have Partbreaker on my loadout, and I probably should. Um, part of what's made the channel so exciting has been opening up the vintage packs. People have been purchasing them. Sora especially has purchased quite a few of the vintage fossil packs. And so we've been able to open up cards from like 20 years ago. And uh, it was a hu huge risk to do, to do that. There's not a lot of YouTubers doing that, opening up the vintage packs, because to open those up costs crazy amounts of money. Uh, so I took a risk on that. And it's mostly been paying off, I would say. Like, uh, it, it's fun for me to open it and uh, you know people are happy to watch it as well yeah it ended up being really exciting I was scared to do it I was like really scared actually because one of the things about the cards is you can buy twelve thousand dollars of cards and then sell twelve thousand dollars of cards you just list it on eBay make your make your price the lowest price compared to everyone else in terms of buy it now and the next person who's gonna buy that item will be buying your item because most people shop by price so you just make yours the cheapest and sell it. So when it comes to the cards, you can buy them and then you can resell them. And especially for somebody like me with so much experience with selling things online, this is very easy. So that, that part of it never scared me. What scared me was opening up the booster boxes. That scares me a lot because I wasn't sure if you could actually like sell the packs, but actually people really enjoy having the packs opened live in the live stream. So that was a, a risk. It was a pretty big risk for me and um, it's all ended up pretty well ended up being actually massively fun i should show you guys a box of outgoing mail i have i have a, a box of outgoing packets from uh, yesterday i forgot to take <laughs> i actually fell asleep and i i forgot to put it in the mailbox i, I tried to put it in the mailbox in the last minute so there's no chance of it being stolen uh and it's not exposed to the cold weather as long so i try to keep it i try to drop it off with the mailman at the right time uh, so i got a box of outgoing packages right next to me right now it's like it's a lot of mail <laughs> I learned so much about running a small home business from my dad. It ended up being really, really valuable information. I didn't learn any of this shit at school. I didn't learn how to do YouTube at school either, by the way. All the things that are contributing the most to my career, I did not learn at school. And I did learn valuable skills at school. So like my wife is a, she's basically a senior software engineer now, right? She's been doing it for over two years and she's doing very well with it. Um, and I could have actually pursued the same career as her and we would have done pretty well. 
uh, because you know being a software engineer is a good career benefits there's an in-demand job but I'm happier doing YouTube and I just would not have learned this at school there's no classes for it and running your own business there are some there's some entrepreneurial classes at college sure but it's like actually working for my dad in a small business was more educational than reading a book he went out and you did it I think some really important parts for me working with my dad was seeing him take the family credit card and put like thirteen thousand dollars on it to buy a barrel of like burls or something like that uh, a crate of wood is what I'm referring to and he would put like thirteen thousand dollars on the credit card and this was a huge risk because we had so many children there were 11 kids in my family right so and we were broke all the time we were, my family was always broke we were always we were basically living in poverty all the time because there were so many children we would eat through like six hundred dollars in uh, you know a week which that was after careful 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 budgeting I know you guys you could spend like two hundred dollars on food in like a you know uh, a few days probably <laughs> we were at the time back you know and that was back then too there was there was less inflation we would be going through like five hundred six hundred dollars of food careful planage uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for brink I was thinking of bridge <laughs> we were always just on the brink of being bankrupt and, and just uh, not I learned a lot about shipping and I learned a lot about eBay and here it is like 17 years later and I'm still selling stuff on eBay I, I had all it's funny because when I was in college I sold so many items on eBay while I was in college to help afford college and I had like this whole production setup that I pretty much put away when I graduated from college right I was like okay I'm in my senior year I've got a job in my senior year already working for a bank and uh, and then I, I put all that stuff away I'm like I'll probably never need this again and here we are two years later and I'm cracking it all back out in order to operate this card channel and be able to offer people live stream packs that they can open and have it be in a video and remember what that was like hey guys help me out with the tail will you help me cut that tail Scarlet you can help I'm sure you can right I rolled too early I would really like to be able to roll through that ring I know we got to be close to cutting the tail off Oh god, he's using it again. But yeah, it's a uh, it's been it's been a wild ride for sure. Let's jump back here. Will the bullet not go any further than that? Jumping into the guiding lands or regular quest feels bizarre. What are you guys talking about? this last one up. Oh, there we go. There's a smoke coming up out of the ground. Glad we broke both arms before it. What? Can you rate this in hardest from one easy to hardest compared to Kolf to Roth? Um, it's, it's hard to grade. He's definitely a more difficult fight than a lot of the fights we've had in the game so far. He, he's the most difficult Iceborne monster right now. Especially if you try to solo him. Because you're just not going to manage to. He escaped? Damn, we must have not been doing any damage at all, guys. That's not good. For the ring to explode in front of you and then roll through immediately before the ring under you explodes work for me most of the time. Yeah, we didn't get the tail. Hey, guys, I'm running him specifically to cut the tail. Help me out with that, will you? So whoever runs with me next, keep that in mind. This fight is so frustrating with the randoms not focusing on any specific parts. It's like nobody even looks at the Safajiva Siege rewards information as it's going on. Yeah. Yeah, that is frustrating. Why don't you continue your weapon comparison series like 
uh, longsword versus lance. I really enjoyed it. My my analytics tools kind of showed me that the video was actually strongly underperforming, so that's why we didn't continue that one. I was enjoying that one as well, by the way. Yeah, I thought that was a lot of fun. I can go back and look. Maybe it picked up in uh, viewership, but at the time, it was just really underperforming. I think it has a lot to do with uh, keywords. Uh, keywords, I don't think people search specifically for those kinds of keywords very often. All right, guys. I'm going to change my equipment over to the longsword, and I want to see you guys helping me out. Do we save it over here or something? Yeah. Yeah, part breaker three. All right. I want to see you guys helping me out with this. Because we just spent like 20 minutes not cutting the tail. I kind of knew that was going to happen. I saw the two guys with the gun lances. I should have just backed out. I should have just been like, well, you guys knew I was going after the tail. You brought gun lances, and gun lances primarily do explosive damage. We actually did such poor damage that we did not even defeat him. Uh, even though he was already pretty well beaten down, we should have been able to kill him, but we weren't dealing enough damage. So, what the heck? And I don't think I died that time. Did I die that time? I died the la I died two times the last time, and I think we dealt more damage. We got the tail easily last time. Culper, Mickey, Tactic, and Scarlet. Let's take a quick look at them. Longsword. Great sword. Longsword. Sweet. We got it. Easy. We'll have the tail for sure this time, I think. You should make a video about items that people never use, like binoculars and boomerangs. Hmm. That's actually not a bad idea. Items people never use. I think people would find that uh, fun to watch. Here, I'll write it down in my ideas. Oops. I, I removed one of the channels in my Discord and one of my moderators was like, oh, there's some links I wanted in there and now I feel bad because I did not save those links. Sweet. All right. Game Economist, are you doing a card stream tonight? Uh, I certainly am thinking about it. Would you guys like to see another uh, card opening stream? I think we could do another card opening stream. Let's jump down there. Do you think this could be done with the two-man team? Uh, Castor, I think you, it could be done with the two-man uh, team, but they got to be playing pretty well in order to accomplish this. Uh, me and the moderators in our Discord have been talking about a Safajiva... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Safajiva... Ah, it's, it's like I can't remember words right now because it's so late at night. Roll? Yeah, I think I'm saying that right. Safajiva roll. Yeah, we, we have the hunter rolls right now. And those were for people who could solo the regular behemoth. And we're thinking a lot about a Safajiva roll right now. The new Aqua Shot Light Bogun is basically the new Raging Light Bogun. It caps out on damage at attack boost 7, peaks 3, and agitator 1, artillery 5, mega demon drug. You're welcome. <laughs> David, believe it or not, I actually knew that. Um, fans Perspective, he put together a uh, list of all the meta weapons that are from the Awakened Safajiva weapons. I just haven't made a video about it. I chose instead to make two tip videos. There's also a video I've been meaning to make about how to solo Safajiva. Since he's actually quite easy to uh, solo. Ooh, we almost got hit by that. Nice. Let's all try to get him under that boulder. Oh my god. He got pushed the wrong direction, guys. 
I, th I think you guys were facing the wrong direction. I think I was facing the right direction. Yeah, should be. You should be on this side of him. You guys are gonna push him. You guys are gonna push him that way. We're so close to this boulder already. We only had to push him under it one more time. You guys are facing the wrong side. Oh man, somebody should just make a guide on pushing him under the boulders. Oh, I lived through that. I was trying so hard to foresight slash that. He's under the boulder, she just said so. You should all stop attacking until we drop that boulder. Please drop on his tail. That would be awesome. Yeah! <laughs> I'll go ahead and soften the tail up. I think Rokan mentioned about dropping boulder on Safi in this tips video. <laughs> well, everyone should be mentioning it because it's such an obvious thing that you should be doing. Oh. Well, that's not going to work. Where's the other boulder now? Which way are we pushing him now? Oh, we're very close. We're very close. That was dumb of me. Oh, I wonder. See, I wonder if the boulder would fall on the tip. God damn it, Culper Nick, Mickey, you were on the wrong side of him. You just pushed him away from the boulder. It's okay. It's okay to attack his arms in the opening of the fight to get him under that boulder, because you're going to get the four thousand damage, and you're going to have him stuck there under the boulder for a while. God damn it! <laughs> when the blue shows up under you, right underneath you, and you can't do anything about it, Culper, you're on the wrong side of him. God damn it, dude! Got me with that beam. Ah, oh, somebody pushed him further into the decayed ground. Well, let's go ahead and get him flinched then. Scarlet's sad. So the decayed ground isn't... It's not nothing, let me say that. It's not nothing. All right, we should go for the tail now. Yeah, it's not nothing because you get that whole attack sequence where he doesn't fight back. You did it! Whew. <laughs> oh my god, I, I used my... It just didn't matter. <laughs> of course, we both get, we guys both get freaked by that. All right. <laughs> huh. 
Monkey speak no evil, monkey see no evil. Is that what that is, David? <laughs> Jump to the item box. Load out one. And we'll jump on down. Come on down. The prize is right. So now that we have no traps uh, to push uh, Safashiva under, I would say you can focus on the tail as much as you want now because it makes more sense to. God. <laughs> do not foresight slash that tail. It makes no sense to do it. I wounded it. He's gonna drop. He's gonna drop him in a minute. <laughs> Double rainbow. There it goes. Tail gone in stage two. Yeah, those guys with the gun lances weren't dealing any damage to the tail, probably. I feel like the long-shelling gun lance is surprisingly difficult to use against Safajiva. Alright, so we got one more Safajiva Lash. I don't know if that's enough. I might have to fight him one more time for one more tail, unfortunately. Go ahead with our temporal mantle. Good job softening the forward arm there. Should have held it. Nice. Deal on sword's too strong. Really hit the lower arm? That sucks. Take this off real fast. We'll go ahead and heal. The leg piece requires three lashes. Okay, so three lashes. We should be good then. you guys are focusing on this arm. Oh my god. There's the heater. It's gotta be too hot in here now. Oh, 
Oh my god, that move got me twice? That move's so frustrating. Oh no, am I dead? Woohoohoohoohoo. That's a scary move. I think it's going to be like a Chinese New Year festival. I think you are right. I think that's exactly what it's going to be like. Wow, they didn't hit anything. And I got wall slammed? Oh, man. This guy's been landing every move on me. Did I knock him out of the air? No, I did not. Complete with the Chinese dragon palico armor we saw in a recent dev diary. I'm excited for that. Actually, you know, when they announced that it was going to be a Chinese anniversary uh, holiday event or whatever, I, I kind of felt like, I don't know, I felt like it, it, it reminded me of all the controversy we have going on with uh, all these uh, people, Hong Kong protests and the Uyghur mu Muslims, the, the accusations that the Chinese government is taking them and harvesting their organs and all this stuff. And here we have Capcom making a Chinese New Year uh, celebration. But you know what? I actually don't mind. I actually have never really disliked the Chinese. Uh, and of course, I would hope that they, they're ethical and they're not doing the things they're accused of doing, even though there's probably a lot of evidence that some wrongdoings have been going on. Uh, but I, I actually don't mind their their culture and their food and their celebrations and stuff like that. Come on now. Yeah, I noticed uh, it, it, it came at kind of a weird time is why I noticed. Alright, let's get over there. We got like Donald Trump saying, ooh, we're going to have the trade wars with China. And uh, it's, it's sad that we have so much controversy with them because otherwise I think the Chinese are actually pretty cool. I got their beautiful countryside. I, I gotta go on vacation to China someday. Alright, let's go ahead and eat. Bottom level? Bottoms up. Remember that monster energy drink? Uh, not commercial, it was uh, the viral video where the lady's like, she's like a Christian lady warning you that it's evil energy drink. <laughs> Their culture is beautiful, their political state is brutally ugly, though. Let's go ahead and chop the arm here. You didn't carve the tail. Yeah, I did. I carved it right away. That's the first thing I did as soon as it was cut. He's using his tail attack. Time to go in for this. Zoop. Oh, I still got hit. Let's back away from this guy. Oh my god. Okay, so his chest is in the super critical state now. Oh my god. I think most of that hit his neck, unfortunately. What would you say the best way to level up the grinding lands? Really confused because it's so slow. 
uh, you will want to turn on a movie of yours or a favorite live streamer of yours or a TV show and then you will want to get some decent friends who are not bad at the game find a group that needs to grind with you uh, and you're just going to have to spend a long time because that, that's the secret to it it just takes a long time that is the actual secret there's no I mean you could do if you're really focused and you got people who know what they're doing you could spam that you could do the trap spam I've heard that that's faster than actually killing the monsters um, but just be sure you bring geologists with you and try to fight monsters exclusive to the area that you're trying to level up and just go for it. It's going to take a while, man. You, no matter what, it's going to take a while. Oops, I shouldn't have set that off so quickly. Whoops. Is there any point to fighting him at, at this point? Oh, I guess there is. We just broke the right four leg. That's gonna make me flip. I wanted so badly to use the uh, EI Spear Slash on that move. That would have been so cool. Would it be f so after you break all the parts? Would it be faster for you to just die? I wonder what happens if you break every possible part on Safajiva. Whoa! So what if you could break every part on Safajiva and then just get yourself killed? Maybe that would be the fastest way to farm him. I think that's what I should work on. I should work on a guide for how to break every part on Safajiva. I like how that move still didn't hit. Just missed. Left foreleg broken. So we should focus on the head and the chest now, right? How's it going, Emma? Just in time for the card stream. You're not wrong, it's just about time for that card stream. So there's, there's no point in targeting the arms anymore because they can't be broken. The only thing worth targeting would have been the wings, the chest, and the head. Not guilty before proven innocent. Stand with gamers. <laughs> How's it going, Miji Risen? I think that's a reference to the whole impeachment thing with Donald Trump. Donald Trump, guilty. <laughs> what is he guilty of? We are with you, bro. We know you're innocent. <laughs> what? <laughs> This is an innocent man, people. Wake up. He's he's right, though. He's right on this issue. This The whole Trump impeachment is very similar to what happened with Kavanaugh, in my opinion. I think the Democrats are playing politics, and they're using the impeachment process in an illegitimate way that basically says whichever party holds the majority can just go after a president if they don't like him. Donald Trump's accused of impeachment because he... Uh, he wanted the president of Ukraine to look into uh, corruption from Joe Biden, okay? And so the way this looks like, it looks like you're hiring or you're, you're uh, bribing a, another political leader from an outside country to, you know, maybe throw dirt on your political opponent. That's, that's the worst case scenario. But when you actually look into what happened, Joe Biden himself said that he did a quid pro quo with uh, Ukraine that said, I'm not going to give you money until you fire your state attorney general. So that's why I feel that the Democrats got zero, zero bipartisan support from the Republicans on this issue. Because here we have Joe Biden actually saying the thing that Donald Trump is asking about. Right. He, he says it openly that he does it. And then at the same time, this was really important because this was talked about during the impeachment hearings or whatever you want to call it procedure. Uh, one of the last uh, arguments made by the Republicans, kind of their closing argument, was that aid was never withheld from Ukraine. 
before President Trump made the phone call where he would inquire about Joe Biden, uh, U Ukraine was already receiving the aid. And then after the phone call, Ukraine continued to receive the aid. That's why the Ukrainian president came out and said, no, he wasn't bribing me to do anything. And, you know, the Democrats actually went after the Ukrainian president because he said that. So they're like, oh, well, you're colluding with our president, right? So they don't like him for that. Um, so anyways, there's zero Republican support on the issue. It's just a majority party who... I guess it would be different if Joe Biden didn't openly say on the microphone that he fired their state attorney general and he he told them they had to get rid of it. Other, otherwise, he wasn't going to give them money. He wasn't going to give them aid. If he hadn't openly said that, I would be looking at the whole situation differently. I'd be like, yeah, that's pretty shitty of Donald Trump to be saying that. I don't think that's okay. I think it, you know, it would sound really incriminating. But having Joe actually say that on video... We have video of him saying it. It kind of, I think it's fair to ask about it, to be like, well, you know, what's the deal on that? Why does why does Joe Biden's son work for your energy company? And why, when your attorney general begins to investigate that company, which that was one of the things with the Democrats too. They said they, uh, oh, that company wasn't going to be investigated. That was one of the things the Democrats said. Recent evidence just arose just recently that showed that he was about to investigate that company. So... And that's when Joe Biden says, well, you're going to fire that state attorney. Yeah, I feel like if the Democrats were more honest about it, they would be like, well, what's up with that, Joe? Uh, so that's why Donald Trump's not being impeached for a quid pro quo. He's being impeached for abuse of power. And and the reason they're using that language is because they're they're claiming that he's hiring this other, you know, they, they couldn't get him basically on a quid pro quo, so they had to change the language of it. The other one is obstruction of uh, Congress or something like that. Basically, Donald Trump wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't cooperate with Congress to get himself into trouble, I guess. <laughs> like Congress is being fair to him. Yeah, right. I don't, I don't believe that for a second. So neither of the articles of impeachment made any sense to me. And it didn't make sense to any of the Republicans. I think it was like three Democrats actually voted against the articles of impeachment and not a single Republican voted for the articles of impeachment. And the Founding Fathers were really clear that impeachment has to be a bipartisan effort. Both parties have to agree to impeach a president, because otherwise, impeachment would just become a tool to get rid of somebody you don't like. If, you know, so if a Republican president wins and you're a Democratic majority, you could just get rid of him using the impeachment process. And Republicans were warning, oh, well, if you guys go through with this, none of us agree with these claims. And it would be a partisan, that means one-sided, effort, and it would redefine what impeachment is. It would basically mean the Republicans can do it to a Democratic president. So the next time the Republicans have a majority in Congress, they can vote to impeach a president they don't like. They'll be like, oh, you did this thing? Well, we're getting rid of you. Gonna make the Safi set. Let's go see if we have the wings real fast. I don't think we have the wings. So that was the impeachment hearings in a nutshell. For those of you who are wondering, see, you didn't even have to watch CNN for five hours. You could hear it right here on the Game Economist channel in about five minutes. Let's go ahead and forge equipment. We need pulsing dragon shell. Safajiva hard horn. And we do actually still need three pieces of the fell wing. Reeve says it's a sad day to be a Democrat. I think in the end it looked really bad for the Democrats. I agree. I think if any of the Republicans, even one Republican, voted in favor with the Democrats, it would look at least not quite so... I, I don't know. It would have to be more than one. But it clearly looked like political theater. It looked like the Democrats... Well, and, and this is part of it too, by the way, guys, if you didn't know this. We're, we're about to wrap up the stream. So if you guys didn't know this, the Republicans control the Senate. So right after the House voted to impeach Donald Trump, the news media like CNN and all the news media that absolutely hate Donald Trump, they all said in big words, Donald Trump impeached. He's not impeached. He's been impeached by the House, but it has to pass the Senate with the two-thirds majority now. And since the Republicans control the Senate, that'll never happen. So Donald Trump will not be impeached. 
Uh, and Congress kind of knew this. Congress knew the Republican Congress was not going to vote for impeachment, and they knew definitely the Senate wasn't going to vote for impeachment. So they're going through the whole process and spending millions of dollars to impeach somebody on uh, on something that is just this vague idea, abuse of power. Like, what does that even mean? Joe Biden said in a recording that he did an actual quid pro quo. You guys should be spending your time investigating your own guy and admitting that he did the thing that you're accusing Donald Trump of. That would be so much more honest. That would uh, actually make me feel like the Democrat Party has more integrity about this issue. Or at least if you're going to investigate Donald Trump on it or impeach him on it, you should also be telling Joe Biden, hey, look, we're putting Donald Trump in, in trouble for this. You also have to be in trouble. It can't just be Donald Trump. It has to be both of you. They're not going to do that, though. It's, it's political. They're, they're scraping around for political power. So anyone who's following the issue really closely is probably very frustrated by it. It, 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 uh, and they keep saying this, no one's above the law. No one, what the fuck does that mean? No one's above the law. No one's above the law. That means Joe Biden did a quid pro quo and you guys need to put him in trouble. So I, uh, God, they feel like a bunch of snakes to tell you the truth. It felt just like the Kavanaugh hearing. I believe her, the Kavanaugh hearing. Do you guys remember that? Justice Kavanaugh, he's guilty until proven innocent of, you know, doing these horrible acts to this woman from 35 years ago, and she can't remember any, she can't remember all of it, and it turns out she's a liberal college professor, and all of her story actually doesn't line up, it turns out, and wild accusations come from that creepy lawyer who said, like, uh, he was a criminal rapist or something like that, or a serial rapist, yeah, it, it, it smells just like the Kavanaugh issue, and I feel like I just can't trust the Democrat Party anymore. When the Kavanaugh hearings happened, I lost so much trust in the Democrats when that happened. I felt like after the Kavanaugh hearings, I shifted to the right. And after this impeachment hearings and impeachment procedure, I feel like I've shifted further away from the left again. It's a very awful feeling. They kept saying, oh, it's so sad for our country. Nancy Pelosi's like, I pray for Donald Trump. Shut the fuck up. It's so dumb. I pray. I'm going to pray for you. That's the bitchiest thing you say when you're mad at somebody in a fight. I'll pray for you. I know all about that crap because, I would, you know, I'd be in uh, religious debates. When someone's mad at you in a religious debate, you know what they say? They say, I'll pray for you. That's what they say. So, really, really awful, poisonous politics in America right now. Uh, and the impeachment, impeachment procedure can now be used by a majority party with no support from the other side. Uh, all that matters is that you have the majority. So, this is the craziest part, guys. The Republicans won the Senate in the recent Senate elections, right, uh, not, whatever it was like a year ago, if they had not won that, the Democrats could move forward and just impeach them with zero Republican support. So it just redefines impeachment as a tool of the majority now, which is exactly what the Founding Fathers were scared of. They did not want a tyranny uh, of the uh, other houses of power. So they were very specific about having bipartisan support in impeachments. Look at these guys running around the table with me. All right. Politicians are using poison weapons. I what they are. I think they are, and I don't know what the solution is. God, I really don't know what the solution is. It just is really awful. Crypto says your politics drive me crazy. <laughs> Sorry about that, man. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I tell you guys what. Let's head over to the other channel. Let's head over to the card channel. So, on the card channel, I will be dropping a link for you guys to join that in a moment, okay? And uh, I'll see you guys over there. It'll take me about 10 minutes to set it up. I want to thank everyone who played the Siege with me and got the tail cut, and we got the Horizon Zero Dawn uh, Storm Slinger upgraded, and I'll probably make a video on that eventually. All right, let's go ahead and get the wave going. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I don't mean to upset you with politics. You know, I try to share what's going on with a little less bias than the news, but also I do throw my opinion in there. I didn't like the procedures. I I think that the Democrat. I think this will ultimately be a losing issue for the Democrats by lot. We already know Donald Trump can't be impeached because the Senate controls the, uh, the Republicans control the Senate. All right, I'm gonna thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in ten minutes on the other channel.